Minnesota Congresswoman and presidential candidate Michelle Bachman has had a lot of irresponsible things to say about the nation's debt ceiling, but has been virtually silent on another issue concerning her district that is dominating headlines. The Justice Department and Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights are now investigating the Anoka Hennepin County School District after nine teenagers committed suicide in the last two years, many of them after being bullied for being or perceived as being gay. Samantha Johnson was 13 years old. She had always been partial to wearing sweats <clears throat> and wore her hair short. Kids harassed her because they thought she was a lesbian. On Veterans Day in 2009, Samantha laid down in a bathtub, put a hunting rifle in her mouth, and pulled the trigger. Samantha's mom told Mother Jones, I feel if I hadn't moved to this district, my daughter wouldn't have died. The Anoka Hennepin School District has a policy that requires teachers to remain neutral on matters of homosexuality, which critics say contributes to an extremely anti-gay climate there. Critics also point to groups associated with Bachman, like the Minnesota Family Council and the Parents Action League, who have for years successfully lobbied against LGBT issues being discussed in schools. And while Bachman has yet to comment on this matter, as a Minnesota state senator, she was very vocal in opposing a 2006 anti-bullying bill. There's always been bullies, you know, always have been, always will be. I just don't know how we're ever going to get to a point of zero tolerance. And what does it mean? What will be our definition of bullying? Will it get to the point where we are completely stifling free speech and expression? Will it mean that uh, what form of behavior will there be? Will we be expecting boys to be girls? Uh, what is it exactly that we're asking for? And I don't say that as a sexist comment, but there are just differences with boys and with girls when they're on the playground, when they're in the classroom. Joining me now, the man who helped usher in the message, gay rights activist and Fort Worth City Councilman Joel Burns, the message, It Gets Better. Joel, thank you very much for returning to the show. Happy to be here again. Joel, what happens? when schools like a school district like this where teachers are forbidden by law from even discussing this problem the, these no promo homo uh, rules that they have in school districts and in certain states uh, really create a culture of fear amongst the teachers and educators who work with the kids. That fear gets transferred uh, onto, the, onto the children themselves. They know that they can't go talk to their teachers about the issues that they want to talk about. The teachers are afraid for their jobs. They ended up not talking about it, and it creates this really negative culture in our schools. And, and Joel, I mean, the way these laws are interpreted, uh, even if a teacher is witnessing these things, I mean, you don't even need a kid to come to you and talk about it. Even if a teacher is walking by and witnesses some of this stuff with some of this language, it would be legally impossible or dangerous anyway for the teacher to intervene and talk about it because it may involve talking about gay issues. Exactly. They could lose their jobs. And, you know, jobs in this economy right now are something people want to hang on to. And teachers in Minnesota and across the country want to hang on to their jobs. That's why it's so important that they're not encumbered by these laws. Joel, when you, when you hear that mother commenting about the death of her teenage daughter and saying, if I hadn't moved to this school district, she would probably be alive now, uh, is that how particular this kind of experience can feel as a teenager that really it's the accident of what school district you might be in, what piece of geography you might be in at a given time in your life that can affect how you're viewed and then how you end up viewing yourself. Well, yes, and I would say that this is a problem that is experienced across our country, but this is a particular problem in the Anoka Hennepin School District in Minnesota. There's a culture there uh, that the Southern Poverty Law Center and others have come forward uh, in their lawsuit, and I had the opportunity to serve on a panel uh, at a U.S. Department of Education summit up in D.C. a couple of months ago, and I met a teacher from the Anoka Hennepin School District, and he told me that he had seven kids in the last two years in his classes, his students, seven kids, uh, who either committed suicide or had attempted to commit suicide just in his class alone. Uh, that's indicative of a, of a very serious problem, and I know that you referenced Congresswoman Bachman leading into this. Um, I think her silence on this issue is, is something that's uh, quite troublesome. It uh, implies either an indifference or a disdain uh, for, the, for the children, whether gay or straight, in her district and in our country, that I find very worrisome.
And uh, Joel, in the national statistical picture, the big focus of it, uh, we have studies indicating that 85% of LGBT students surveyed nationally said that they have been bullied at school. This is by no means individualized to particular school districts. Absolutely. Again, it is a nationwide problem, but there are cultures created within these different school districts about how to deal with it. And you find in, in areas where, uh, either in states or in school districts, where the uh, they have policies prohibiting this type of activity of, of bullying and of, of uh, prohibiting any kind of discussion about homosexuality, uh, the suicide rates amongst LGBT teens are much lower. And uh, that's something that's been proved out in a variety of places. Uh, the fact that it's so much higher in Anoka Hennepin County, I think, points to some of the problems that are going on right there. Joel Burns, Fort Worth City Councilman, thank you for returning to The Last Word tonight where you made your network television debut and in the process quite deservedly won a GLAAD award. Thanks, Joel, for joining us again. I'm happy to be here, and I hope the Congresswoman uh, ends her silence soon. Thank you, Joel. Thank you.